Okay, and uh, now I'm here. So it's a great pleasure for me to have the opportunity to introduce to you our efforts in the field of ecology and the environment. On March the 5th, Premier Li Keqiang, in his government work report, has spoke very diligently about ecological protection. On the one hand, Premier Li Keqiang has acknowledged our achievements over the year. Last year was a very smooth, good beginning year for our efforts against the pollution. The PM 2.5 parameter has been going down and our environment has been improving. On the other hand, Premier Li Keqiang voiced new requests for our work this year. He said that we need to focus on the protection of the environment, and we need to step up our efforts in the prevention of pollutions, and we need to also expand the green and the environmental industry. In the meantime, we will need to address the fundamental causes of pollution so, so that the environmental quality continues to improve. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the founding of People's Republic of China. At this crucial moment, we feel very strongly of our burdens and our missions. In the next step, we are going to follow through the strong leadership of the CPC Central Committee with President Xi Jinping at its core. We will implement the Xi Jinping thoughts of socialism with Chinese characteristics for the new era, and we will follow through the requirements of the government work report, and we will comprehensively advance our efforts in order to make even greater achievements. Now the floor is open for questions. Thank谢主持人。李部长您好，我是人民日报社记者习近平总书记在内蒙古代表团审议时强调，要保持生态优先，绿色发展为导向的高质量发展新路子。请问探索新路子生态环境部将如何抓好落实呢？谢谢。With people's daily in a deliberation session of the Inner Mongolian delegation, General Secretary Xi Jinping stressed on the importance to maintain strategic focus on strengthening ecological preservation and explore new pathways toward high quality growth featuring eco-friendly and green development. Um, what other measures will your ministry take to identify these new pathways toward high quality development? Thank you. Thank you for your question. As all of you know, General Secretary Xi Jinping attaches great importance to ecological environment. Since the 18th CPC Congress, General Secretary Xi Jinping has made numerous remarks and laid out a number of requirements and guidelines for environmental protection. He has put forward a number of new concepts, new values, and new strategies, which are part of the Xi Jinping thoughts for socialism with Chinese character characteristics for the new era. And this has significantly promoted the protection of the environment in China, and we have made historic achievements. On the afternoon of the March the 5th, March the 5th, while participating in a deliberation of the Inner Mongolia delegation, Party Secretary Xi Jinping again made very important remarks. I was very privileged to also participate in the review of that delegation, and uh, I was listening to the important remarks of General Secretary Xi Jinping on site. I have truly benefited a lot, 
and I was very much inspired and encouraged. I have two major observations of what President Xi Jinping said at the deliberation. He, on the one hand, has laid out the importance of environmental protection. In the five-in-one general layout, ecological environment is one very important pillar. In the 14 points of comprehensive development, one of them is balanced development between human and nature. Among the five development concepts, green development is one important integral part. And in the three critical battles, the battle against the pollution is also one significant part. All these indicate the importance of e ecological protection. And it also attests to the important position of this issue among the priorities of our party. My second observation is that President Xi Jinping emphasized that we need to pay attention to four points in environmental protection. Number one, we need to maintain a strategic focus on environmental protection. According to President Xi Jinping, environmental protection and economic development, they should be combined together. They need to be integrated in our efforts. Well, this is a self-evident knowledge, but what's very difficult is to translate this concept into practice. We cannot separate concepts from the reality, and we have to combine them all in one. We cannot slacken our efforts when there is a inspection from the central level of the government, and we cannot have loose management of the environment, nor should we waste the environment when we face the burden of economic development. We cannot seek economic development at the sacrifice of the environment. According to President Xi Jinping, when China's economy is transitioning from high growth to high quality growth, prevention of pollution and environmental management is a major hurdle that we need to cross. And we have to be very persistent in overcoming the difficulty in front of us. In the meantime, we have to maintain a very strong strategic focus on this issue. We will never let loose of any links. Otherwise, we are going to see all the efforts ending up in vain. Or we may generate some further problems in the future. I think he has made very targeted remarks. These remarks are forward-looking. They are based on science, and we have to carefully follow through these very important requirements. To do our jobs better, we are going to focus on the following four areas. Firstly, we are going to study and uh, implement the Xi Jinping thoughts on ecological protection. I think it's not just a very important concept, but also a very important methodology. It represents as a guideline for us in our efforts solving all sorts of problems. We have many strong feelings in our specific work. So in the next step, we are going to further study, publicize, and carry forward the Xi Jinping thoughts 
on the protection of the environment. Secondly, we will win the battle against pollution. How do we fight the battle? Well, I have actually elaborated on our efforts and measures on the Minister's Corridor on March the 4th. I won't go into details here. And thirdly, we are going to consolidate three fundamental pillars. The first is to form a green and eco-friendly way, uh, way of production. The second is to strengthen the recovery of our ecological environment. And the third is to enhance the capacity building in environmental management and protection. These three pillars serve as a very important guarantee for our success in a battle against the pollution. And fourthly, we have to very actively engage in some pilot programs. We need to build some eco-protection pilot zones. And large mountains and loose waters, they are a good fortune for all of us. And we need to build some pilot bases and centers testing these principles in order to find a new pathway towards high-quality growth. In doing so, we hope to accumulate some experiences so that we can scale them up nationwide. Well, that's all from me for this question. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. With CRI, uh, we haven't seen much of a blue sky in Beijing since the opening of the annual CPPCC session on the 3rd of March. And last year, the State Council distributed the three-year action plan on defending the blue skies. Uh, how is this battle of defense going? And what are the key areas of supervision this year? What new concrete measures will you take in this respect? And winning the battle actually is not all about statistics, it's also all about being recognized by the people. So what measures will you take this year to further address the problem of fighting pollution for, fi for the sake of fighting pollution and the bureaucratism in the process? Thank you. Thank you for the question. The battle to protect blue skies ranks first among all the campaigns. And it has also won most concern from the people. Today, the weather is very good. And I'm really happy because I will have the gut to take your question. Ever since the campaign on protecting blue skies began, we've had good results. And we can see results in four aspects. First, we have completed top-level design. The three-year action plan was uh, introduced last July. And after that, we enacted a series of action plans on dealing with uh, diesel vehicles and also um, action plans to protect the environment in Yangtze River and other river basins and those to protect air quality in the winter. Different localities have also been introducing their own 
laws, regulations, and action plans on environmental protection. Second, we've established a basic framework for eco protection. The State Council has set up a leading group for eco protection in uh, Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei area. And we have also further improved the coordination mechanism for equal protection in Yangtze River Basin. And to the Ministry of Ecology and the Environment, we have also set up a bureau for air quality management in the Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei area. And we have coordinated plan, standards, environment evaluation, law enforcement, supervision, and emergency and contingency actions. It has also the day-to-day -day functions of the leading group of air quality management of the Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei area. Third, Major tasks have been underway. The reforms of, of thermal power has been underway, and 80% uh, of the thermal power plants have been transformed. And we have also made a remarkable progress in replacing coal with natural gas and electricity. More pilot cities have joined us. And the number now uh, is 35. And we have finished uh, the, the transform of the transform in 4.8 million households in 2018. In railway transportation, we see an increase of 9.1%. So we can see that all the work has been underway in an orderly manner. For effects have, uh, have been uh, satisfactory. The number of good air quality days uh, have been up by 1.3 percentage points, reaching 79.3 percent, and uh, PM uh, concentration has been down by 9.3 percent. And uh, we see uh, the number for Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei area is 11.8, and that for Yangtze River Basin is 10.2. So generally speaking, we've done a good job. But we still have daunting pressure. And we shouldn't be too optimistic. There's still a long way to go. I have summarized the challenges we face. First, the challenges with mindset. When there is external pressure, will put more efforts in it. But when uh, the upper level is not, is not supervising, then we'll slack our efforts. When we have already finished the easy tasks, we face more difficult tasks. Third, the imbalance in our work, the imbalance between regions, between cities, industries, some of them are moving faster, or some slower. Fourth, uh, weakness in our uh, basic work, in our infrastructure, facilities, human resource, equipment, and even our capacity, our work style. We still lag behind in those aspects. Fifth, uh, uncertainties posed by the nature. Challenges from the five as aspects mean that we still have a daunting task, and we need to be fully aware of those challenges. 
And going forward, the Ministry of Ecology and the Environment will do more. We already have a roadmap, a timetable, and also an action plan for the campaign on blue skies. The general principle is to focus on uh, major regions, major uh, time frames, and major industries. We need to optimize industrial structure, energy mix, transportation uh, structure, and also land use mix. Uh, structure. And we also need to do more in uh, communication, law enforcement. And last, we need to bring down PM 2.5 concentration, the number of uh, highly polluted days, and also need to make the people happier about blue skies. So for us, everything means implementation, and we also believe that implementation means effectiveness. And blue skies will there will see more blue skies. Thank you. 请问咱们生态环境部如何落实上述政府工作报告的要求？有哪些举措来避免一刀切的现象再次发生？谢谢。With Beijing Youth Daily, since the launch of the annual Central Inspections on Environment Protection in 2016, there has been from time to time oversimplistic, one-size-fits-all responses from local governments, which was to shut down factories and companies on very short notice, without looking into their real conditions in order to avoid investigation by inspectors. The government's work report this year says that enterprises that need to take measures to meet standards should be given a reasonable grace period to do so. And the government must avoid handling things in a simplistic and crude way or just shutting firms down to be done with it. How does your ministry plan to make it happen and avoid the reoccurrences of such simplistic actions? Thank you. Thank you for the question. It's a very important issue. First, I would like to make three points. The first point, enterprises are the major players in uh, the fight against the pollution, and they need to uh, carry out their responsibility on the eco-protection according to laws and regulations, and they need to ensure that their pollutant discharge are up to the standard. And as with the supervisors, the oversight agencies they need to supervise in compliance and penalize them according to laws and regulations. And for this part, I think we should be resolute. And second, on the simplistic approach, the so-called simplistic and one-size-fits-all approach happened in some localities when local governments paid no efforts in their day-to-day -day operation and when central government supervisory groups came, they were in a rush to achieve instant results and to deal with the supervision. For some enterprises that need to take measures, some localities didn't give them a reasonable grace period. They didn't pay attention to their needs 
to the needs of the enterprises, but when supervisory groups came, the, just to shut down those enterprises and have uh, taken simplistic and crude ways in their work. Third, for such simplistic approaches, our attitude has been very clear. That is, we are against it. The simplistic approaches are uh, the phenomenon for formalism and bureaucratism in the eco protection area. It has done damage to our image, our credibility, and also the rights and interests of the enterprises. To be frank, this issue is not widespread in China. It is also not the mainstream. But I do admit that it happens in some localities at some time and has resulted in bad consequences. So we are against it and we will correct such approaches. For two years, we have done our work in four aspects. First, mobilization at different occasions like conferences or meetings. Our attitude has been very clear. That is, we are against such simplistic approaches. It is of no use to doing a good job in the campaign to protect blue skies and has um, bad implications. Second, corrective measures. We have issued documents on such simplistic approaches. Third, penalty. In our eco protection supervisory work, we have supervision. On the abuse of power, and also uh, those that those bodies that uh, don't do a good job in their uh, functions. I think you must have noticed that we uh, have made public many such cases. Whenever we receive reports of such cases, we will take corrective measures and uh, make public those cases. Fourth, Demonstration. In our supervisory work, when we identify a problem, we transfer the problem to the local government. And at the local level, the local government, the environmental authority, and the enterprise will work closely together. And they may render a one month rectification phase or a three months period for that problem to be addressed. And in terms of the reform for the pollution certificate, we also adopt the same principle for those enterprises who have not been granted. We will give them a certificate, giving them a certain period of time for them to come up with a solution to the problem. And when that period becomes due, then we will take some uh, punitive uh, measures. With these four categories of efforts, with demonstration, demonstration standardization, and demonstration and punishment, we have significantly cut the bad behaviors. In the next step, while consolidating these four efforts, we have two additional measures. The first is to standardize 
environment and eco protection related law enforcement activities. We are going to optimize the way of power exercising, and we also will put in place even stricter supervision. In the meantime, we plan to increase our awareness of service. So on the one hand, we supervise those enterprises, and on the other hand, we serve those enterprises in that we help them to solve all the environment-related issues. So in summary, we are against this one side faces, uh, fits all approach in addition to playing a very important regulatory and supervisory role, we are going to come up with more services and assistance to enterprises so that we can help them achieve green and high-quality development. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you with Hubei Daily. The Hubei province is on the riverbank of the Yangtze, and my question concerns the Yangtze River. The General Secretary said that the Yangtze is not well and is actually very ill. Hubei has been pursuing green development that has done a great deal to protect the Yangtze River. Mr. Minister, could you share some ideas on future steps to treat and preserve our mother, mother river? What are the new measures to take to refine the ecological compensation mechanism in the Yangtze River economic belt? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Protecting the environment in the Yangtze River Belt is a very important decision made by the CPC Central Committee. And this also is a major strategy concerning the overall development of the country. Over the years, Ministry of Ecology and uh, Environment is working closely together with 11 municipalities and local governments in carrying out the following efforts. The first is to formulate plans and policies. And we have formulated the ecological protection plan of the Yangtze River, and we also worked out the three-year action, uh, three action plan for the ecological recovery of the Yangtze River. And these two plans have, of, have served as a guideline. The second category of effort is full coverage. We're covering most of the provinces along the Yangtze River. And last year, we conducted inspections to 16 provinces along the Yangtze River. By doing so, we have conveyed and transferred the pressure to all those provinces. And the third effort is to advance green development. So we have defined a eco-protection bottom line at all the provinces. We also have a red line for environment and a ceiling line for the use of land. And we also have in place a negative list system for environmental protection. The fourth effort is to focus on key issues. Over the past two years, we have been focusing on key issues, and we have made very positive achievements in this aspect. For example, the protection of uh, water sources. After two years of effort, all the water sources along the Yangtze River, we have uh, roughly 
1,400 of them, and they have been improved, and uh, now the completion rate is 99.5%. Uh, is we are also very concerned about the treatment of uh, sewage water, and uh, to this day, we have altogether 12 uh, capital cities along the provinces of Yangtze River have completed the treatment of uh, sewage water, and uh, we are now making progress with the underground water protection efforts. Another effort is that uh, we are addressing the microplastics and pollutions along the Yangtze River. And we also have made very important results and achievement in this. And last year, we have uh, identified and uh, disposed 1,304 sites of sewages. We also have identified some major issues of environmental degradation along the Yangtze River. The faith's uh, faith, uh, effort is to consolidate our existing efforts, and uh, we have conducted a joint research about the recovery of the ecological conditions in the Yangtze River. We have dispatched 18 expert teams to conduct on-site researches and to provide on-site technical assistances to various localities. But we have to be mindful that there are still daunting pressure and challenges in front of us in terms of the Yangtze River ecological production. From August to November last year, the Ministry of Ecology and Environment organized a special team and traveled to 40 municipalities of 11 provinces. Uh, this was a secret inspection, and uh, we have identified roughly 160 problems. These problems are very alarming. And it's attached to the judgment made by General Secretary Xi Jinping that the Yangtze River is not well. In fact, it's seriously ill. In the next step, we are going to formulate a ecological recovery plan for Yangtze River. And uh, we are also going to put into practice what is required in the three-year action plan. For the Ministry of Ecology and Environment in 2019, we are going to focus on eight areas of specific efforts, and four of them have been carried out in previous years. And uh, the first is the protection of water sources. The second is the disposal and treatment of uh, sewage water in cities. And the third is the uh, green protection layer effort. The fourth is further is to further uh, identify the solid waste and uh, illegitimate uh, pouring of the waste. In addition to these four areas of work, we also have uh, new, uh, four new categories. The first is to focus particularly on water. And we're going to focus on category level five water along the Yangtze River. The second is to streamline and inspect all the sewage pouring sites. The third is to focus uh, particularly on the uh, on the chemical of uh, phosphorus. 
So in doing so, we are going to make sure that uh, the Yangtze River ecology can become optimized. You also asked the question of uh, ecological compensation. In improving our environment, we have to use executive and uh, legal measures. On the other hand, we are going to use economic and uh, technical approaches. And eco compensation is a major way combining economic and uh, technical uh, solutions. And we have successful experiences already in this regard. For example, in the Qing River, Jiuzhou River, and the Ruan River. The eco compensation of Yangtze River is now well underway. The Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Ecology and uh, Environment and uh, China's National Development and Reform Commission have conducted a number of joint seminars. Last year, the Ministry of Finance has allocated 5 billion yuan of budget to specifically address the eco-compensation of Yangtze River. In the next step, we are going to expand that mechanism and make it uh, in good use. Thank you. Ah,谢谢主持人，我是日本经济新闻的记者。啊，这几年中国加大了环境监管，环境监管的力度，是稍微比较明显。而目前啊，中国经济下行压力加大，呃，国内有一些声音提出，为了应对这个压力，呃，
he was very clear that we couldn't slacken our efforts when we meet difficulties in economic growth and we should never sacrifice eco-environment for economic growth. In our supervisory effort, this is also one of our priorities. Whenever we find out that some localities have inaction uh, in their day-to-day -day work, and then we will have corrective measures and have uh, accountability systems to hold those localities accountable for their deeds. And this is to ensure that our battle against the pollution will deliver effective outcomes and we can show up the weak area in eco protection. Besides, our people can recognize our work and we can stand the test of the history. As with the battle against the pollution, I also shared with you my observation when I took your questions at the minister's corridor. We need to implement our work in different aspects and strive for better effects. Thank you. Thank you. 作为生态环境部,您是否有信心在地方经济现在一个下滑的形势下,地方的企业和政府能否达到他们的职务目标?我们生态环境部会推出哪些具体的措施来支持地方的政府和企业参与无染治理?谢谢。With Reuters, many local governments and firms have been calling for more support on pollution control. How much confidence does your ministry have in the ability of local governments and companies to meet the pollution control targets against the backdrop of the slowdown in growth? Uh, any concrete measures to support them? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Against the current backdrop, the campaign against the pollution has achieved the progress, but we also face a lot of difficulties and challenges. But at the same time, we need to be aware that many opportunities are in front of us and the number of opportunities may outweigh challenges. I think I can summarize those opportunities and the good conditions into five aspects. First, the uh, Central Committee of the CPC and Central Government attaches great importance to eco protection, and General Secretary Xi Jinping has taken the initiative in providing uh, fundamental directions and a political guarantee. At the same time, localities, authorities have uh, increased their awareness on eco-protection. And we have a coordinated efforts on different fronts. Second, 
high quality development will do good to eco protection and curbing pollution at the source. Third, macroeconomy and policy support. Ever since the adoption of the reform and opening up policy, we have uh, accumulated a good foundation in terms of human resource, technology, etc. And this can help us win the battle against the pollution. And we also have a very good funding foundation. At the press conference of the Ministry of Finance, the minister announced that their support on eco protection will reach 60 billion, uh, presenting a year on year increase of 35.9%. This is a third uh, favorable condition. Fourth, ever since the 18th uh, CPC National Congress, a lot of reform measures have been put in place in terms of eco protection, and the dividends of those measures have benefited our work. I won't go into detail. Fifth, over the years, we have been exploring in our work, and we have accumulated a lot of good uh, strategies and methods. Those good strategies and methods will help us do a good job in our work on eco protection. So, although we face a lot of challenges, we are still optimistic because we have the opportunities at hand. We need to be confident. Going forward, as with the support on local governments and the firms, we are preparing new measures and uh, policies to replace and to sustain the momentum rendered by the old ones. And we will also have some new measures to reinforce those efforts. As with the support to local governments, first we will increase funding support and policy support. Second, more technology support. I mentioned earlier that 58 municipalities along the Yangtze River have had expert groups from us. And before that, uh, in 28 municipalities in the uh, Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei area, and 11 municipalities of the um, of the Feng Hewei Hewei River Plain area have also uh, enjoyed a similar supportive measures. Third, We'll continue to reinforce our uh, supervision and monitoring work. Supervision and uh, monitoring is not only of a supervisory nature, but also um, assisting. We we'll also assisted the localities to address their problems. Regarding the support to firms, we have three measures. First, we will deepen reform, decentralize our functions, and provide better services. Last year, we issued a document that includes 15 major measures, and we will continue to implement them. Second, we will take the initiative in providing technology support to firms on pollution control and help them to find a reasonable way out. Third, we'll continue to improve our eco-economy policies, facilitate green development, and create better momentum. Thank you.
，第三排对。好，谢谢。中国网记者提问：明年我国将承办联合国生物多样性保护大会。其实去年的大会成果不多，但是中国依然取得了很好的成绩。那有成绩就有经验，中国可以给国际社会提供哪些宝贵的经验？那明年大会上是不是可以提供中国解决方案？大会的筹备情况也请介绍一下，谢谢。This China dot com dot cn.、Uh, next year, China will host the UN Biodiversity Conference. Last year's meeting did not produce much result, but、uh, China still has made big progress in this respect.、Uh, perhaps does it have a plan to to share some experience with the international community? Uh, can we expect a Chinese proposal or Chinese solution、um, at next year's conference? And how is the preparation of the conference going at the moment? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Biodiversity is our life. In 2010, the UN、uh, designated the year 2010 as the year of biodiversity, and、uh, the sentence I mentioned earlier was the theme of、uh, that year of biodiversity. And、uh, it points out the significance of biodiversity. Protection. China is one of those countries that has the biggest biodiversity, and we have been attaching great importance to this work and have made remarkable progress. In 2011, we set up a national committee on biodiversity, which set up. Promulgated China's、uh, biodiversity strategy and action plan, which is valid for 30 years till 2030. We also、uh, had the biodiversity campaign to implement、uh, the UN strategy for 10 years. Our efforts have also been recognized by the international community. At the 15th COP, the 15th COP was convened in China, and this choice approved China's achievement and the international community's recognition. As with the progress, I can summarize them into the following aspects. First. Uh, biodiversity protection has been included into different plans, and they have been given important places in those action plans. Second, biodiversity uh, in situ and uh, relocation protection, both of them have had remarkable progress. China's na nature. Reserves number two thousand seven hundred and fifty, and the national level ones are four hundred and seventy-four. The area for land reserves, nature reserves, uh, reach one point seven million uh, square kilometers. Through these efforts, we have well defended the biodiversity in China. We have also well preserved the. Wild species in China.、Uh, through this effort, we have made sure that some of the valuable species and plants they were very well protected. And one of the very successful examples is the big panther. And thirdly, we have launched the biodiversity projects. And fourthly, for a long period of time, biodiversity is a major part of the law enforcement related. To environmental protection, we have identified a lot of the illegitimate behaviors. And firstly, we have strengthened talent training and scientific research. And in, in the meantime, we have made a lot of achievements in international exchanges in the field of biodiversity. But yes, indeed, like pollution control, biodiversity is a major challenge in front of us. It's a daunting task. 
And in a process of addressing the problem of biodiversity, we have uh, witnessed how it contradicts with economic developments. Looking forward, uh, going forward, we will have to well follow through the China, Biodiver uh, China Biodiversity Protection Action Plan, and we also need to implement some of the major projects in terms of uh, biodiversity. We need to build up a network for biodiversity, and we have to step up our efforts in biodiversity protection, and we need to do a good job in inspection and protection of uh, biodiversity. In the meantime, we will need to extend the channel for participation of the public and enterprises. By doing so, we can do a better job in protecting biodiversity in China, and in the meantime, we can contribute to the biodiversity of the whole world. The 15th Congress on Biodiversity of the UN will be held next year in China, and this is a very important Congress because it will define the biodiversity protection goals over the next uh, three years, and it will also define the biodiversity strategy over the next 30 years. And we as a member to the convention, we shoulder a very heavy responsibility, and uh, now we are working together with relevant authorities preparing for this meeting, and uh, the preparation plan has been approved by relevant authorities, and we have kick-started some of the work, and we will shoulder up our responsibility as a host country, and we will try to make this conf uh, conference a success. Hello,我是贵州广播电视台动静新闻的记者。那么今年全国两会啊,呼吸当中我们是感受到了北京热烈的氛围,也感觉到了一点空气污染。那么请问,只在解决大气重污染成因与治理公关的总理基金项目搞
heavy air pollution. And uh, but we will have to wait to the program finishes before we can make it public. To my knowledge, the fundamental causes and sources of heavy air pollution include three areas. The first is the emission of pollution. The emission of pollution is the major cause. And according to some expert research, and this has been detailed to some categories. Uh, in particular, there are four major categories, and these four categories they account for 90% of the sources of pollution. But one city is different from another. The first is industrial, the second coal burning, then um, motor vehicles, and then production use. And also in the concentration of PM2.5, we have now identified its major composition, SO2, NO2, some organic matters, etc. And they, in total, account for more than 70% of the source of PM2.5. So now we have figured out its major source and uh, fundamental cause. We will identify in what direction we are going to focus our efforts. So, secondly, the major cause is climate conditions. And this is a external condition, but this is also very important to the formation of air pollution. According to the experts involved in this project, climate conditions are affecting the air pollution year by year and with a deviation ratio of 10% between different years. In some of the years, climate conditions may push the influence to 10%, uh, up by 10%. In some places, climate conditions may account for 15% of the reason of uh, air pollution, and the, if in some cases, some places have a worse climate condition, then the air pollution may also become worse. There are fluctuations between different years, but this is the second reason. And uh, thirdly, we figure out that uh, when the wind speed is larger than 2 meters per second, and when it is also a windy day, it's very likely for us to have a smog day. So that is why when we forecast such a weather condition, we will have to take some emergent actions to reduce the pollution. So this will also help reduce the overall level of pollution at some of the days. Thirdly, cross-regional transfer is also a major reason. For example, in the Beijing Tianjin Hebei area and also in 24 peripheral regions, there is a transferring ratio of pollutants at 20 to 25 percent. And uh, when the air condition is very good, then it may account for 15 percent. And at some of the places, the 60 percent to 70 percent of the pollutants from one city may transfer to another city nearby. So that's why we have to put in place joint practices because we are all in this environment and we are all connected to some extent. So this is my personal understanding of the fundamental causes. We have uh, three major pollution causes, emission of pollution, climate conditions, and also cross-regional transfer of the pollutants. 
So now we have to optimize far major structures. We have to do a better job in forecasting of weather conditions, and we have to engage further in joint exercises and efforts between different localities. And we have been doing this for quite a number of years, and it has been very effective. And the research has further attested to this finding, and uh, so we will consolidate our efforts going forward, and I believe that uh, we will have a better result in the future. What I specifically want to mention here is that because we have identified these three major sources, so when the weather is very good, we should not be complacent, we should not slacken our efforts, and uh, because it may grow worse all of a sudden, and uh, we should not lose our confidence when bad weather comes, and we should not very randomly deny our mechanism and uh, adjust our efforts. We need to have a strategic focus. We need to believe in science and technology, and we believe uh, we must be persistent with our efforts. Thank you. with Guangming Daily, a question on climate change. Uh, currently, apparently, Europe's hands are tied while the U.S. no longer intends to lead. What is China's view and position on climate change in this context? Uh, what actions has China taken? And what challenges do you see coming? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Climate change is a major global challenge facing all mankind. The standpoint of China has been consistent and clear. No matter how things change externally, we remain committed to our own standpoint. As General Secretary Xi Jinping has mentioned at multiple occasions, fighting against climate change is not a job that we do following others. It's a job that we must do as part of the human beings. It's also the eternal requirement of all the Chinese for seeking better and high quality development. We're not just talking the talk, we are also walking the walk. As the largest developing country in the world, we will be 100% committed to the protection of climate, and we will be 100% committed to the promises that we have made to the whole world. We have also made remarkable progress. First, China takes an ex active part in global climate change governance. We have been an active participant in the uh, multilateral mechanism. We have also been uh, protecting this mechanism. The Paris Agreement was reached with China's uh, important role, especially the support from General Secretary Xi Jinping. On this basis, we also contributed our efforts to the success of Carter's conference. And through this conference, we uh, reached balanced commitments on bilateral fronts. On climate change, we have also had in-depth exchanges and cooperation. 
which are fruitful. So this is just an example of how active we have been in global climate change governance. Second, uh, China has set out a national strategy on climate change. We restructured our industry, energy mix, increased energy efficiency. And have brought down the emission of greenhouse gases. It is fair to say that we have reversed the trend when China's uh, carbon emission was too large. Last year, compared with 2005, the carbon intensity was down by 45.8%. And we have reached our 2020 20 commitment in advance, which was a commitment of 40 to 45% decrease. Uh, and non-fossil fuels take up 40.3% in the energy mix. And for other aspects, we have also been going forward smoothly. Besides, China has also been active in exploring the establishment of carbon markets. Uh, in the past years, we have run some trials. In December 2017, we have initiated a nationwide carbon market uh, effort. I believe that the carbon emission exchange market and uh, the system that comes with it will help with uh, carbon emission reduction and climate change uh, resolution. Our attitude has been consistent and our actions are very clear and fruitful. But we still face problems and challenges. The current uh, the, the current energy mix uh, lays heavily on fossil fuels. In recent years, we have seen uh, market reductions. For example, the proportion of coal in 2012 was 68.5 percent last year, uh, it was 59 percent. And uh, considering China's large volume of coal use, um, the reduction of each one percentage point means a great stride forward. But 59 percent is still a very large proportion. As with the implementation, we still have a long way to go. We still have uh, challenges and problems. Going forward, we prepare to address the issue from five aspects. And it will be resolute in addressing climate change and uh, implementing our national strategies. First, uh, policy coordination. Support to technology R&D and its extension. At the same time, for major industries, we will uh, quicken our steps to establish uh, emission standards. And also, for the carbon emission market, we will have uh, capacity building and related mechanisms to curb uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Third, we will uh, adapt to the effects of climate change and have green, low-carbon development and lifestyles. Fourth, we will continue to participate and lead the global uh, fight against the climate change and uh, uh, take the opportunity of low-carbon development. Fifth, cultivate new growth drivers and uh, give full play to the positive role of low-carbon economy and play a coordinated role and contribute our parts to the global fight against the climate change. 
All right, so we were just listening now to a press conference by China's Ministry of Ecology and Environment, Minister Li Ganjie, briefing the media right there in terms of China's environmental protection efforts, as well as some of the challenges that remain. Minister Li talking about the progress that was being made, for example, PM 2.5 dropping by 9.3 percent in 2018, as well as China shifting more from coal to natural gas. But China is not resting on its laurels. There are lots of challenges that also remain on the agenda in terms of tackling pollution. Minister Li talking, for example, about still imbalances between region and region in terms of tackling environmental pollution goals. Also, in terms of what are the next steps on this front, um, can we see more enforcement measures? Can we eliminate one size fits all measures when it comes to tackling environment protection and not simplistic measures, but measures that actually work, uh, as well as further actions to be taken, such as funding support for companies, as well as technology support, boosting supervisory and monitoring, as well as boosting the biodiversity and ecology, the overall holistic environment here in China. Let's get a deeper dive into this. Joining us in the studio is Mr. Ma Jun, the director of the Institute of Public and Environmental Affairs based here in Beijing. Director Ma, thank you so much for joining us on the program. So certainly a lot to dissect, right, in terms of progress all the way to further actions to be taken. I want to talk about first policy coordination that uh, Minister Li was talking about in terms of next step, right? Because we do see different regions in China in terms of different progress when it comes to environmental protection. What do you see in terms of better policy coordination so that one province does not transfer its pollution to another province and we can have more coordinated efforts in terms of tackling this problem? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, as uh, Minister Li uh, cited uh, that through a major uh, uh, major project uh, funded uh, with the premier f uh, funding uh, from Li Keqiang himself. Uh, the uh, emission sources uh, uh, have been identified uh, that one of the key reasons for all this regional pollution is the transferring of pollution of, uh, of emission from, from one region, from one province to another province. Mm. For example, the province surrounding Beijing is actually the largest uh, uh, many of them are the largest emitters, so they transfer here. And the, I mean, now we need to tackle that, but the difficulty is that different regions are in a different uh, development stage. So how do we give support to those underdeveloped regions to help them upgrade and transform their, their economy? And then now, you know, the, 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 the challenge now is the that we are facing an economic downturn, yeah. the potential trade war, and all of this, uh, you know, raised the question that we have observed that that, that in some regions, especially those uh, underdeveloped but uh, with a lot of heavily polluting industries, they there have been some actions uh, to try to relax the control, the enforcement, uh, so as to make way for for uh, proper up the GDP growth rate. I think that's a, that's a very uh, dangerous sign. And, uh, you know, we have seen some real occurrence of, uh, of uh, uh, smog in re more recently uh, since uh, uh, the beginning of last autumn. So we need to pay attention to that. And today, I think um, we have seen Minister Li uh, quoted uh, uh, General Secretary Xi you know, when he talked about that, we should not, we should maintain strategic focus yeah. on environmental protection. We should not try to, uh, you know, make way for slacken the, the control, make sacrifice uh, of the environment for the way of economic development. I think that's a very important message. So there are isolated cases where we do see perhaps some more environmental pollution when growth slacks, but overall the message is very clear from policymakers that even as China's growth moderates, the focus on the environment will still absolutely be there. That's a right? very important message because yeah. in some local regions, uh, there are those who feel that all these years we have been suffering from this very, very stringent uh, environmental uh, uh, policy and uh, enforcement. Uh, and now, you know, it's finally it's time for us to relax that. Uh, you know, especially, you know, ironically, it's uh, also because China has uh, you know, the ministry have over, uh, you know, have achieved its target yeah. ahead of schedule. 
But again, still lots of challenges to remain, and there's a lot of good stuff to dissect from Mr. Minister Lee's press conference. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Mr. Majin, Director of the Institute of Public and Environmental Affairs here in Beijing. Thank you so much for Thank that. You. And that is going to wrap up our coverage of the press conference by China's Ministry of Ecology and Environment. Global Business is coming up next. I'll see you again in just a few moments' time.